Hi, it's Bridget. Hey, I'm arriving. I'm arriving. Hi, nice to see you. Let's see how I'm gonna set this. Okay. <sighs> Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here, as always, is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, we're gonna have an interesting conversation with Prince in the afterlife. Now, I wanted to talk to one of my spirit guide friends about Shakti, about the energy of sensuality, the energy of expression in regards to loving your physical body and sharing that, okay, we're just gonna talk about sex, kind of but not in the way you think. We're gonna talk about sensuality, we're gonna talk about Shakti. Shakti is the energy of this fire, desire, and also coupled with and enveloped with the energy of love as a sacred container. So the one spirit guide friend that I knew I could talk to about this that I haven't talked to recently is actually Prince. So we're gonna have a conversation. So is this an adult conversation, kind of, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is a tough topic to talk about with all y'all, but we're going to do it. I've talked recently about gender and spirituality and kind of how we are transcending gender instead of just one identity of man or woman in body expression and energy expression and identification. And I've talked to you about that. Um, gender specifically, we've had a conversation about that um, in a channeling video. I think we talked to trying to remember who we talked to about gender. Did we talk to Carrie Fisher or David Bowie? I can't remember exactly, but we started to have some of those conversations. I think it's really important to do that, especially because it's coming into my awareness. I'm trying to use new pronouns. I'm trying to use a broader perspective when I connect and share and talk about my life instead of just like a husband, instead of that, a partner and just really encompassing and honoring a lot of my viewers and people I love deeply and care about deeply who have feelings about gender specifically and expression and also about sexuality and expression. So let's have some conversation. Now that's a lot, that's a big order to serve up here for Mr. Prince in the afterlife, but I think he can handle it, let's be clear. So when you talk, when I talk about, not, so I know it used to be kind of taboo, like when you, he's here already, obviously, you guys. I mean, I think you can feel him, right? You, when you did, you were like cutting edge a bit, because when you did the whole Purple Rain album, and well, I don't even know if it was Purple Rain specifically, I think it was Purple Rain, actually, where you got the, like, a rating where it was almost like a rated R rating or something because of the explicit lyrics and where you talked about sexuality and masturbation and all sorts of things related to women and men and very much um, this kind of freedom of expression and kind of on the cutting edge of some of that stuff and borderline back then we used to be like oh that's so raunchy that's I mean hello, I'm a child of like the 80s, okay? So it was like, oh, that's so raunchy, that's so naughty. Like, I even thought that. I was like, oh no, I'm not a Prince fan. That's like naughty. I'm like 11 years old, you know? That's so naughty, you know? Like, come on, you guys, right? Remember, like, even Michael Jackson all grabbing himself. I was cool with Michael Jackson, but I guess he was a little more mainstream grabbing himself. Well, now we know what we know now. Hello, who was the one that maybe would have been a little more open to express themselves in a very authentic way, maybe Prince, right? Maybe that's the kind of vibe we should have been having conversation around in the first place, so as not to vilify sexuality or sensuality. And when I say sexuality or sensuality, I'm talking about the expression of, not the identification, not the type of partner you have, not how you resonate in your body, but just in general, the expression, sexuality, the expression, you know? So clearly you were cutting edge. And also you have some androgynous features or rather, maybe I shouldn't say androgynous because maybe even, so your petite structure, I know you hate that when I say that, but it's just the truth, okay? Your body type and your hair and makeup and the way you could move and dance and the clothes you chose were 
were kind of a mixture of masculine feminine. I mean, there was definitely sensuality, of course. He says, oh, it was pure sex. He's like, oh, it was, it was dripping off me. He's like, sex was just dripping off me. That's obvious. It is very obvious to all of us. And so I, I'm curious about now this afterlife perspective, looking back on the human life, being known as like a player or a ladies' man, etc. The impact now, looking back on that, do you think that, I mean, you played with gender, you played with the expression of gender, but also not specifically calling out or singling out gender, you also had that gender expressive mix in with sexuality. And so I think that's really confusing. I know it's really confusing for me because at first when I was learning about gender identities and gender variations and things and the whole range of, of, of how that is expressed and, and experienced by people. And um, I right away was all confused about, well, how does that fit with sexual orientation or attraction or sexuality? And so can you talk to us about this? Because I think you were onto something way ahead of time because you just expressed. Do you have something to say about that, the way that you presented yourself and expressed yourself? He's like, he's really said, literally says, I was dripping sex. And he said, okay, so is it because sex sells? Is it because it's a marketing thing? I mean, let's be honest. I mean, look at advertisements, look at models, look at um, Instagram nowadays, look at the old school commercials and movies and all that. I mean, it totally does and did and still does, but in different ways now. It's now there's a huge range. Who are you actually appealing to? There's not this or that. There's a whole bunch of extra <laughs> ways to connect. He's saying, I didn't, I don't think I, he says, I wouldn't say that I consciously connected to my feminine side. He's saying, I definitely loved women. And he says, I appreciated them. They were like works of art, the woman's body and the, just the features of a woman's body and the curves and the, the, he, like the beauty of it. He's saying like art, like we as women, I identify as a woman. So I'm a she woman. And he's saying they're like works of art. So, okay. And so in a sense of appreciation for that or adoration, or even you guys like devotion, like almost like a devotion to women, he borrowed some of their like hair, kind of ways and used makeup for expression of beauty. And he says, so creative, so, and he says fluid. He actually uses the word fluid. So would you say it like looking at you now, like if you were here today, people might say that you were gender fluid. Would you, would that resonate with you? Does that, does that identify? Does that make sense to you? He says, I don't think it needs to be, it doesn't need to be specific. He's like, you don't need to, he says, um, I don't need that. If that's how people connect to me or through my work or my um, art and it, it means something for you, he says, like, that's, that's the meaning for you. He says, it's not, that wasn't an intentional thing I was doing, he says. And, and I wouldn't say that I would change anything today. Like he literally says, I wouldn't change anything today. I wouldn't change anything. And then he also says to me very specifically, I identify as a man in human context, in human terms, I identified as a man. And he says now as a spirit in the afterlife without gender, there's no gender in the afterlife. He says, I would definitely, he said, I would certainly say that it would be masculine with a devotion or love appreciation for the woman for the ultimate divine woman. He says, that is the purest source and sense of beauty. He says, so we're gonna talk about sex. Yeah, let's talk about sex. I'm so gonna have to like categorize this or something on YouTube, but this is gonna be a fascinating conversation. So because you're connected to divine feminine and women and appreciation for women, clearly you understand or understand Shakti energy, which is that sacred fire desire energy, this desirous energy and that, like for me, I connect that with my ability 
to express myself and be, as Glennon Doyle would say, untamed in my body. So if you guys don't know who Glennon Doyle is, take a look at her stuff. She's got a great podcast, We Can Do Hard Things. It's on iTunes and other places as well, probably Spotify. So check that out. But that's kind of what allowed me to uh, start to consider different levels of expression and freedom of expression as far as being a sensual and and um, connecting with my essence, I guess, in a sensual way. So I think this would be helpful for other people to hear, <laughs> okay? Men or women or however you identify, whatever your attraction orientation is, this is a good conversation and you know, so get some coffee or maybe some wine. So talk to us about... <laughs> The sh your understanding of Shakti and the desire in within women or the womanly desire because Shakti is the female identification I, ugh, it's so hard to say that ugh, blah, blah, blah. it's so messy to say that so messy to say gender specific but that's what it is Shakti is identified as traditionally connected to the understanding of woman divine feminine and um, Shiva is traditionally connected to the divine understanding of man, masculine. There we go. That's how we'll say it. I won't say too much extra words because then I just complicate things and offend people. So let's not do that because I don't mean that, by the way. Not even. I'm so fine with whatever. I'm like, hey, whatever. Talk to us about your understanding of Shakti, the divine feminine. Can you do that, Mr. Prince Rogers Nelson from the afterlife? He says, I think we've covered that. Women are beautiful. They are this source of beauty. He says, they are just this beautiful. He literally shows me like a flower, like at the center of the body and just this opening of this lotus flower or opening of a rose. And he says, it has to be more progressive, more transcendent. So it's much more rose-like. And he says, women are truly transcendent. He says, in the energy of the expression of the essence of woman. So when you identify with the energy of woman or Shakti, he says, it's kind of like perfume is what he's showing me. It's literally showing me like an exotic perfume. You know, a little musky, a little bit of that cashmere kind of notes of that with that kind of sensual, maybe even sandalwood or depending upon how you activate or connect with that kind of free flowing energy of the fire element of the Shakti energy. He says it's like that. It's like this perfume or this essence of woman. And he says, um, men love that. He says, if you're in a position where you're a man and you feel a, a, a kinship with that present, that presentation of man, He's like, you feel, it's so crazy, you guys, because literally he's trying to talk to me about this from an afterlife perspective, which there's no bodies. So there's really no male or female or body parts, let's be clear, except he's showing me this beautiful goddess woman body. And I keep going like this, like with the curves. I hope that doesn't offend anybody. And if it does, too bad. I don't mean it that way. But I'm like, you can appreciate that, a beautiful body. And men have that too. They have this kind of structure in their shoulders and and in their backs and um, in their bodies as well, maybe in their legs. And you know, there's different parts of men that you can appreciate to the form of the body. But what he's showing me is this transcendence and like the women or the energy of Shakti, which is identified with this essence of woman, divine feminine, is like a perfume and men have that too. He's like men just, he says, you can just literally breathe that in and activate that fire inside you. He said, it actually comes when I see it. He said, it comes into you. He says, from the place between your heart and your sacral chakra, whether you're, um, whatever kind of body type you have, you have all the chakras, the seven energy centers of the body that follow from the top of the head all the way down to the root chakra. So he says, um, it comes in between the heart and the solar plexus. Is that right? Yeah, so there's the heart chakra, and at your belly, there's a solar plexus and right below that at the womb space for a woman's body, um, the low gut for men is the sacral chakra. And he's showing me that the, the Shakti energy, this light, this fire desire actually comes at the bottom of the heart and the top of the solar plexus. So the bottom of the heart with the emotions and the energy of emotion infused and at the top of the solar plexus, which is purpose. 
So the purpose is to love. And he's like, the, the purpose is the freedom of the expression of love. That's what Shakti is. The purpose is the freedom of the expression of love. That's what the definition of Shakti is from Prince in the Afterlife. The purpose is the freedom for the connection of love. Boom, heart chakra, solar plexus, boom, that's what it is. I did not realize that, that is fascinating. That's fascinating. Okay, so how many of you are thinking it's a goddess thing and it's like womb, sacral chakra, it's like where the sex organs are, It's that's what it's about? That's where the Shakti energy is, the root chakra and the sacral chakra connected in where everything is at, where all the action is, right? In the physical form. Prince says, it's here between the heart and the solar plexus. And it's really about the freedom of the connection for the love. And that's what it is. And he says, it's essence. It's pure essence. It's, it's just pure essence. It's literally like perfume. Pure essence is what it is. He says, you can't think of it in terms of a, an act of a type of body where pieces fit together. Let's say that. You can't think of it like that. He says, it's transcendent. And then you, when you, every time he says transcendent, you guys, every time Prince says transcendent, I see this lotus flower like opening up. And every time I see this lotus flower, I totally think of the episode. <laughs> from friends so gonna date myself so gonna date myself the episode from friends where monica was like <laughs> talking they were having a flashback she was talking to rachel who was like the cool girl and monica was like <laughs> did you give him your flower did you give him your flower like talking about having sex for the first time right and so that's what i think of when i think <laughs> when I see this image of friends showing me this lotus flower and he's saying bridget it's about transcending what you think you know in your human mind and your human body. It's, an, it's like this advanced ascended expression that you, you can't, he says, we're, we in our minds are so limited, but our bodies are willing to be open to the freedom of the flow of love. That's all you really want, he says. That's what your spirit wants, is to be free with the energy of love, because that's what spirit is, he says, is pure love. And the body loves the loving energy because that keeps it safe from disease, that helps it feel happy, spontaneous, joyful. He says that keeps the body creative and flowing and movement. And it's just, it's, it needs to express. And that's what movement is. That's what flow is. That's what energy does. He's like, you know all these things. He basically says it's transcendent and it's this big lotus. And I'm like, oh, so cool. Wow. Wow. Like my mind is like, whoa, okay. So I get it. So this is why then, this is why all of the new, the younger generation, I'm gonna be very stereotypical and I'm gonna paint with a broad brush, you guys. So. Not true for everyone, I'm just making some broad statements here, but it seems like the younger generation is way more open to sexuality, who they're attracted to, who they fall in love with, um, that they're not limited by bodies, body shape, body type. Um, they feel so much more, um, there's, there's so much, but there's also so much, so many more opportunities to, to screw that up and offend people because of all the different labels and identifications within genders, within sexual orientations and all that. And it's like, we're seeking to belong. So we need a label or a category or someplace to fit in. But at the same time, this younger generation, especially, they're creating this huge wave of, we don't want that. You don't need that. Be an expression. People are people, let's just, Spirits are spirits in bodies. That's really what people are is spirit in a human body. So let's just be free spirits and let's not think too much about things. Let's not get in our own heads and get in our own ways. Let's just be open and loving and follow when our soul recognizes ourselves and another, that's when the attraction connects. And then that, that's when that Shakti light lights up and that's when we can have real, beautiful spiritual connections with human bodies 
people in a human context and experience. And then we can build upon that into relationships that foster a freedom of expression in other areas like in abundance and making as much money as you want in your life or an expression as an artist or a writer or an expression as being a successful teacher or a successful doctor or a successful entrepreneur or a successful parent. However that that looks and shows up, that Shakti light energy can then fuel these other parts of life and expression through relationship. So it's, I know it's a confusing time and I am like, we're just going to say I'm in my mid forties. Okay. And you guys are going to be kind and say, Oh no, you don't look like you're in your mid forties. Let's just say, let's say mid forties, even though I'm being very generous. So at the place I'm at in my life, I have kids that are in high school, college and middle school and they're in relationships and friendships and and romantic relationships where it, they're not traditional and what the hell is traditional anyway like it doesn't matter there's no such thing as traditional traditional is the past and so right now here in the present i think if we just cut ourselves some slack and not have to try to fit ourselves our kids our family our parents our grandparents into old ways of thinking but to recognize that people had different have had different experiences and they will continue to have different experiences as we move ahead and look back right and you can look back and understand things so much easier right so let's stop trying to look back and understand things let's just acknowledge that we come into the present moment with different expressions different understandings different experiences Different. I was having a conversation with um, uh, a family member the other day about this. And you all know, right, that my dad was gay. My dad was gay, but he was closeted. I hate that term. That sounds so stupid. That sounds so stupid. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't like the term. Um, but he was not living his true truth at all. Um, openly or with his family or anything. He was very much afraid. It was very stigmatic at that time. All of the things, right? I don't judge him. There's no judgment whatsoever. That's his, those are his choices. But so I was having a conversation with a family member and we were having this con this conversation about how cool it is that, cool it is that this generation now can, and we as their parents can let them just unfold. Let them have different kinds of relationships and different life experiences because we're going to need that in other areas, in innovation, in, in education, in science, and in art, and in so many ways we're going to need all of this progressive energy that is trying to, I think, create a some, more of a solid foundation of an ex, not an acceptance, that's not the right word, but embracing the truest diversity of all, which is literally the diversity of everything. Because each of us is unique and we bring unique things in so many ways. And a lot of those uniquenesses are not obvious. They're not overt. Like you don't know. Do you know what my gender expression is really? The only reason you know that is because I said, I identify as a woman and my pronoun is she and I probably look today like a woman, right? But I could be fluid, even though I'm in my mid forties, I could totally change my perspective and be like, hey, now I'm free to, I never grew up this way. I could totally present more masculine if I chose to. And sometimes I do actually dress a little more masculine, I think, looking back on things. I probably do at times, which is fine, whatever, right? But I was having this conversation with a family member and we were like, yeah, it's just such a different time than it was back when we were growing up, you know? And I said, yeah, like there's so many more choices now. There's so many more choices within ourselves to recognize who we really are or who we might be now, you know? I think that's why people start to kind of wake up later in life to different experiences and lifestyles. And it's not like a midlife crisis where you check in with yourself necessarily. It's just like, wow, the world is unfolding. And I know there's drama and trauma right now. I know it's confusing, but that confusion, that messiness is art. It's like creating and finding new ways, new things to excite us, to inspire us and to fill us with hope. And that's the point. So how did I do, Prince? Hmm?
Yeah, I think this was an interesting conversation. I hope you guys thought it was interesting. I mean, all over the place, I know, but come on, this is like my channel. I could talk about whatever I want to talk about. And today I thought this was great. I thought this was an interesting topic and it sure perked me up, woke me up today. So I thank you for being here, Prince. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I love your moves. You are an amazing dancer. Oh my gosh. Oh yes. Very nice. <laughs> okay. So thank you for being here on Above Life channel on YouTube. Before you go, do me a favor and make sure you click make a choice to subscribe to the channel, but also to get notices. YouTube has kind of changed up some stuff and some people have told me that they haven't been getting notices. So if you are concerned about not getting notices, make sure you double tap that and click it. And also just know that every Monday is when I post my channeling videos. Sunday, I post the podcast, Sunday morning coffee, and Monday to start your week, I always have a channeling video for you. And this one's gonna be interesting. Make sure you got those earbuds in if you are listening to this at work because of the content. It's not that risky, come on, it's not. But you never know, it depends where you work, right? Right. So I hope I've inspired your spirit today with the help of Prince and this interesting conversation from the afterlife filled you with some hope. I sure feel hopeful whenever I talk about the younger generation and all of the expression and the opportunities and the diversity of expression for, for gender, for sexuality. I just, I feel so filled with hope and inspired by that. I hope you do too. Thanks so much for being here. Remember, it's your life after all. This is your life. It's yours. So live it the way that you want to live it, the way that you want to express it. Just live it. Thanks for being here.